What's going on guys? Today we are going to stain this beautiful, beautiful quilted carf top double cut. We're going to use some Angelus leather dies. You can purchase these in the link below. And this piece of wood came from, of course, Kimball Hardwoods. He's got some of the greatest wood in the world. This whole build is documented on my channel. I'm going to post this one first. Um, and then you'll see the whole build later. This is a one piece mahogany with an awesome flame maple neck that'll show you how we stain that as well. But first, this is the color that we're gonna try and replicate. I think it's a black sanded back, and then it's a darker blue and more of a turquoise in the center. Not so sure how close we can get to that with this piece of wood, but that's what we're going for. So we're gonna start with black, I've got the body taped off. We're not going to stain the back. We're just going to leave it natural. So I wanted to tape this off before we had any problems as we get started. So we're going to use the black. We're going to put a nice thick coat on. And of course, always pour to the side. I already installed the tailpiece because I wanted to sand them flat as I take this off. This is a really thick top. This is a full three quarter carve by hand to some degree. I'm gonna put nice two thick coats on here. I'm a little bit late on this guitar. The great guitar build off pushed me back oh, maybe a month. And we've sold a bunch of other whiskey barrel guitars, so I've been busy. taped off the neck to make sure I don't stain that. It's always my fear. And uh, I don't think there's any glue. Man, yeah, maybe we're good. So go over this, make sure it is nice and even. Make sure you go in multiple directions to get the stain to sit right. I might have to scrape, I don't know. At least I got all the binding glue off. I don't see any issues, which is great. And I don't see any extra sanding that needs to be done, so we can just sand this for 320. And we should be done once this dries. About 10.30 in the morning, we're gonna let this dry for a couple of hours, and maybe we'll come back tonight and begin the second part to this. That top looks awesome.
Alright, sometimes when you do a carve top and you sand, you see all your ridges that you thought you got out, but you didn't. So I re-sanded some of the sides here. It was just real little in terms of what I needed to go. We're going to come back with turquoise first and see how this reacts. And I can kind of figure out the shades of what I'm trying to do. You can see how much black I pick up right away, which will help clean up the sides here. Definitely will have to come back and put some more black down. Again, you can purchase these dies in the link below. You can just see how much black I'm pulling up. a little blue see what it does we'll use the blue in the turquoise rag here we're trying to feel out the coloring haven't done this combination so I think I'm still gonna have to sand once more blue is definitely looking awesome on this This actually pretty damn close. Since that looks so good, we'll come back with some more blue over it. And since we're sort of practicing, let's just take the black rag and the turquoise and drag it on the edge and see if that gives us that darker look it does but it gives us a nice contrast This then darkens up the spots that were not right. And let's come back with a clean rag and wipe turquoise in the center and pull up some of that blue. And then that's pretty damn close. keep wiping that back once we actually hit hit this with the steel wool and pull out a little color it'll look significantly better
come back with the black. This time, this is the art. We're gonna just wet with the neutral and try and just darken this up a little more. See, at this point, I can leave it or I can sort of resand it. It depends what the steel wool does, but the coloring is really, really close. Come back with the turquoise again. Again, the trick is just to keep fading these colors. It's dark now, but we'll clean that up. It's a little black. This is that point where everyone says stop. <laughs> and I think I could get it better. There's a couple spots that I, I see, it's just a little bit too light. And I just wanna darken it up because I know if I hit it with a sander, it'll immediately go lighter. I am actually surprised at how good this looks already. All right, we'll leave it, we'll let it dry. Steel wool it next, Let's see what we're thinking. So we'll come back with some open grit sandpaper and this is, I think 600. That wasn't doing it, so we went back to the steel wool. Pulls a little bit more out but I'm starting to notice some real small scratches in the wood, specifically in that corner. Not sure I didn't see them or if the dye was just covering them up. But I see one up there on the horn and then one right here. So we'll just try and get this out. And what I did is I came back with some 320 sandpaper and that's what I'm holding. And we're just working over those little scratches. I ran and got a new piece of sandpaper and then just came back and sanded it with the sanding pad and that gets out most of the scratches. All right, so I had to do a ton more sanding than I thought. There were a couple scratches down here. That's why it was so dark. I actually found a sander that I had that I forgot I had. So to clean this up now, because you've got mishmashed colors, we're gonna go with a little black and neutral. We're gonna wipe this in so it's not full black, but it's enough to sort of pull the color back in that I was looking for. We'll work that in on the sides here. And those scratches were just too much. To leave. So what's nice about this is it's just soaking in perfectly. It's already got color in it. I had a trouble sanding that out, so I had to use a couple special tools to get there. On these curves sometimes what's happening is the color soaking in not as evenly as a flat surface so you have to manipulate the coloring just a little bit. I can see there's one spot there, maybe one right here. But then we'll come back with the turquoise. I got put away. Turquoise, rag, original. Then 
I'll mix all of this in. So make sure that this is sitting right. What I'm noticing is there's a lot of lines. Forming here with the color you want to make sure you keep the rags moving so you don't let those lines sort of soak in I think I'm definitely gonna to have to do a little bit more black on the side here see it's just a little bit light don't really want to add more black, but I think I have to. to be careful not to come into this section. So I've got the black, I'm going to mix it around in the rag. We're just going to feather it down like this. Still not doing it. I got a lot of black on here. You know, once I come back with the turquoise, should be able to rub all this in. What's the turquoise? All you gotta do is just keep this rag moving and really manipulate it. And I think I got it. Picking up all the black, let's move it around. We'll still hit this with steel wool to get those lines out, but this is so much cleaner. And then as you go around, you sort of use these bigger strokes to clean it all up. Still a little bit dark here, but I know the figure is weird. We're going to take a little neutral and blue. Let's see if we can get a little bit more blue to pop versus the black. Sort of a weird mix going on but I'm getting real close feel it and I'll come back with a clean rag and some turquoise and just work this over once more Picking up a lot of the black. Thinking we're close here. Real close. Steel wool will really help coming up here. Maybe it's a little dark on this edge. But we're going to leave it and just do the steel wool. So 
we'll come back with this fine mesh pad. Didn't really like the way that this was working, so I went back to the steel wool. Every once in a while, I, I just noticed a couple sort of scratches, which I was like, is that from the pad? Uh, but steel wool usually doesn't leave that. So we came back with the steel wool and pulled out some of that color. I've got the sides looking good. The lighting is not great here. We'll vacuum this up and then we'll put five coats of sanding sealer on here. First coat is very, very light, very misty. Those coats are very, just let them spray and sit. And then by the time you get to the third, fourth, and fifth coat, you can go a little bit heavier. And then you've got a really nice seal and you can put whatever finish you want on it and it's not going to bleed. But look at that top. We'll be posting the completed guitar in a little bit, but thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.